for Deacon and this is a man who is always available okay and uh, he has a uh, he has two, two little girls and one more to come or yeah one more to come one more boy to come okay so I think he's playing for a basketball team so there will be two more boys or two more kids to, to come okay so I'd like to uh, welcome to you our speaker for today, Deacon Ian Nakintan. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Well, uh, a pleasant morning to everyone. I would like to invite everyone to please uh, rise. Please stand up. We are here in the most important part of the program. We're in we have to study and listen to the preaching of the Word of God. Amen? I would like to invite everyone to please open your Bibles to the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. Here in BBC, we only use King James Version. Amen. If you don't have a King James, you can ask one of our deacons or Pastor John, or uh, you can uh, see it in the screen as well. Open your Bibles in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. We will be reading one verse and uh, let's read it all together. Are you there? Yeah. Let's read it together. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. May the Lord bless the reading of this word. Let's pray. Our most and gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we praise you, we thank you for this opportunity that you gathered us uh, to worship you in spirit and truth this morning. We would like to come to your presence this morning asking and humbling ourselves to ask forgiveness for all the sins that we have done to you, O God. We would like also to come to your presence this morning to ask wisdom and knowledge for your speaker, for your servant, so that uh, may you give uh, him the courage and the boldness to preach your word, no matter what happens, O God. But I also commit to you, and I beg you, Father God, that you give our brethren, our listeners, a humble heart, a soft heart, a heart that is willing to listen to your word, O God. Lord, I would like to ask for your Holy Spirit to lead us this morning, and especially our enemy, O God, that is all over the place this morning. We pray that you bind him and restrain him so that he will not disturb us this morning. For this precious time that we have to study your word and to praise you, we pray that you bind him, O God, for this time so that he will not distract us and so that we may be able to learn something for this morning, O God. And I pray that your Holy Spirit lead us for the rest of the service and we pray, O God, that you are only be your name, be worship, be praised, and glorified this morning. All these things I pray in Christ's most precious name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. I would like, uh, actually, I am very thankful and I'm very happy when Brother Ronald mentioned that uh, this is the Filipino day and Filipino service because I will be speaking in Tagalog. You want that? I know our Kenyan brothers will, uh, will, will not like that, but we have Brother Conrad and other brethren to translate it for you. You like that? Yeah. You want? Yeah. Well, if you want me to speak in English, I will be asking a very simple thing from you this morning. I'll be talking to you for 30 minutes, but I, I beg you, I don't want to waste each and every one of your time. So please, lend me your 30 minutes so that you will not go out from the door upstairs empty-handed. 30 minutes. Is it a deal? Amen. So when you are blessed, you say Amen. Amen? Amen. So you really wanted me to preach 30 minutes. Because when Pastor John gave me this chance, I asked him, Pastor John, how many minutes do I have? He said, we, we can adjust the time. I, I came from a fundamental Baptist church. I'm a fundamentalist, and we love to hear and listen to preaching one hour, two hours. Amen? We are here for that. Amen? Amen. You want me to do that today? Yeah. But because we have to follow some time programs, we will be 
I will be sharing to you the Word of God in a very quick manner. If you will cooperate with me. No sleeping, okay? You don't sleep. That's why I ask uh, Mom Betty to please turn on the AC so that you will feel uncomfortable this morning so that you will listen. Amen? Alright, I, I didn't do that. Just erase it, okay? So now, before I start, I would like to praise and thank the Lord for this wonderful opportunity, for this rare opportunity to stand in front of you this morning. I know that I am not qualified to do this. I know that I don't deserve this, but this was only made possible by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I also would like to thank uh, Pastor John for allowing me to minister to you the word, word of God this morning. Thank you so much, Pastor John. Brother Ronald, thank you for allowing me to lead the service this morning. And most especially, I would like to thank our visitors. Can I see the hands of the first-time visitors once again? Raise your hands. Visitors, first-time visitors. All right? Let's give them a big round of applause once again. Welcome, and we are happy that you came. Welcome, we are giving you our warmest welcome here in Berean Baptist Church, and also to the one that invited you. Amen. Let's give them a big round of applause again. Because you cannot come here without the person that invited you, because that is the one that is being used by God to brought you here in this place to listen to the message of the Word of God this morning. Amen? Amen. And second, I would like to thank Group 2 for the wonderful uh, and yet simple and yet very beautiful decorations this morning that you can see. I won't mention your names, and I know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Amen? Amen? Let's give a big round of applause once again for Group 2. When I came here this morning, I felt like I am attending uh, Philippine Independence Day. That's why uh, Brother, uh, Brother Marvin just uh, minimized the stars that you can see in front of you. So I just want to let you know that you are in BBC and you are not in an Independence Day celebration of the Philippines. Amen? So let's get, let's get it on. Let's start our service this morning. And like what we have uh, uh, read on our text this morning about uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. The message I want to bring with you this morning is about we are on our third week for our Mission Emphasis Month. Amen? I didn't include the preaching of uh, Brother Cleo, but that was the introduction of all. Here I am, send me. That is the intro for the missions now. Last week, it was uh, two weeks ago, a uh, very powerful preaching was delivered to us by Brother Mike Wawero. And last week, Brother Elwin Luga delivered us a message about faith of the Word of God. So this morning, I hope and I pray for one week and two weeks, I pray that I wanted to encourage each and every one of you this morning. I want you to, I want to challenge everyone that you can make a difference. You can make a difference this morning by praying for your missionaries. Amen. Amen? So as I continue with the message, when we speak of missions, we are speaking of reaching people of all races, cultures, and countries with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the missions. And the missionaries, they are the ones that are being sent forth. Amen? Amen? The perfect example for missionaries are, I don't find anything, no other than our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the best and the perfect example of a missionary. He came from heaven. He gave up his comfort zone. He obeyed the will of the Father to come to earth, to die and to pay for our sins, just for us to have an eternity in heaven if you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Amen. But this morning, I want to share with you another man, a very, a very same like you and I, man. But this man was the greatest missionary that ever lived that I will be talking to you in the Bible. And he is none other than Apostle Paul. Amen. Apostle Paul was a missionary. He was a man sent forth by God and the church to bring the gospel to the lost. Apostle Paul traveled almost 1,400 miles in his first missionary journey. You can see on the handouts, on the, on the projector. 2,800 on the second, 
and 2,700 on the third. And if you will total all the missionary that Apostle Paul had made, he almost traveled 13,000 miles on his 35 years of mission work. I want to emphasize to you, brothers and sisters, that Apostle Paul traveled and made this missionary journeys through sailing, by walking, and by riding a horse or a, or a mule. Because during that time, there's no airplane, right? There's no airplane during that time. There's no train, there's no bus. Unlike this day, nowadays. Amen? So basically, brothers and sisters, I want to challenge you this morning through the life of Apostle Paul. We will come quickly on our first point. And that on your notes, you can see on your notes that the blank Paul blank. The partners Paul six. The partner Paul six. We are all aware that Apostle Paul was a giant of faith. He was a pillar of faith. He was a man, a very powerful man, that really loved the Lord. And he is a very faithful man. But I want you, you to, to see this one. On 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, he said, Finally, brethren, pray for us. This man, a very powerful man, a very faithful man, a very strong man, he asked the Thessalonical, Thessalonical believers to pray for him. This is same is true with the missionaries nowadays. Missionaries can go a lot of places. But they need your prayers, my prayers, and all our prayers. That's why we are including this topic this morning that you can make a difference by praying for your missionary. Maybe we are accustomed to pray for ourselves. Lord, we are very selfish. Lord, please answer my prayers. I want to marry someone. I want to have this car. We are always praying for ourselves. Brothers and sisters, why don't you start this day? Challenge yourself. Pray for a missionary. Amen. Beg for the name of that missionary in your list this morning or in this evening. And pray for the needs and for the protection of that missionary. Amen. Amen? Amen. Apostle Paul seeking a partner to go with him by praying for the missionary or praying for him. Apostle Paul was not seeking to pray for his own welfare, for his own to become rich, but he is asking the believers to pray for him as he go to his journey and as he go to his ministry. Yeah. I'll give you an example. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 10 to 11, this was during the time when the, the Israelites were in the wilderness. Moses was the leader of the Israelites. And Joshua was the, the general of the, the, the army. They were fighting the nomads, the nomadic tribes. They are the Amalekites. And as Moses and, Moses and Aaron went in into Pharaoh, they did to so the Lord. Um, I'm sorry. 17. I'm sorry, I think I made a mistake. Exodus 17, 10, 11. I'll just give you a story. During this time, they were fighting and they were battling against the Amalekites. When... Moses and Aaron and Hur went to the hill to overlook and watch the battle. During the time when they were fighting, every time Moses will raise his hand up on the sky and on the heaven, they are prevailing, they are winning the battle. But Moses will get tired. If I will ask one of you to stand in front of me for 15 to 30 minutes of your time and you will raise your hand, maybe you will, you will, your, your arms will shake. Same is true with Moses. He's a normal being, like same like you and me. So every time he gets tired and he put down his arms, the Amalekites are winning the battle. So what did this Aaron and Hur do? They are the partners of Moses. So they hold and they help the arm of Moses to raise it so that they will win the battle. Right? Yeah. It's a very good idea. Amen? Yeah. But even if you will hold the arm, you will get tired also. So whenever they put it down again when they get tired, maybe they after they finish, they get boils already in their armpits. I don't know what happened. But so they made a very clever idea. They make a stick and to support the hand. Maybe they are engineers before also. They know how to put support. So to cut the long story short, they prevailed. The Israelites win the battle. Brothers and sisters, these are very simple illustrations that you can see. 
that a partner is very crucial and is very important in the ministry. Amen. You might think you are just sitting there, but a simple thing, a simple task that you will do, you will grab something and you will bring it, you will bring a visitor. That's already is a big deal for the Lord. Amen. 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 So brothers and sisters, Apostle Paul need the prayer of the believers. That's why, brothers and sisters, challenge yourself. Bring yourself in the, out of your comfort zone. Try to pray for your missionaries. Amen. Amen? The question here, why is it that we need to pray for the missionary? That's why we have the second point, that is the importance of prayer partners. The importance of prayer partners. You can write it in your notes. When Paul, finally, he mentioned, finally, brethren, finally, meaning to say, as we all know, when every time Apostle Paul is writing his letters, whenever he mentioned finally, that is the conclusion. No other questions, that is the conclusion already. That's, he concluded it already. That is the rest of the matter, that it's the last issue in hand. And to make the long, the long sentence short, that is very important. Whenever he said, finally, meaning that is very important, finally, my brethren, pray for us. That is, no other questions at hand. I used to remember when Pastor, uh, missionary Pastor Mario Inada, correct me if I'm wrong, Pastor, when, they, when he came here from Zambia, and Pastor June Manuel from Dhaka, correct, Pastor? I... I I, I almost forget the preachings that they made, but I was so blessed by them. But this is the only word I remember with them. I summarize it, but he, they mentioned most of them, and even if Brother Sheleto, uh, our missionary pastor in the Philippines, uh, Pastor Sheleto, he mentioned, what? More than we need your money, we need your prayers. Amen. Because through prayers, we are showing our complete dependence on the word of God. Amen. We are showing our dependence on our God that we cannot do anything except we seek and we beg and we put our knees on the Lord to pray for it and ask for the wisdom and for the guidance and for the will of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. That is very important, brothers and sisters. That is the greatest need of a missionary is for people that is willing to partner or to pray for them. But I want to ask you, what would you feel if someone will approach you and tell them that, brother, I prayed for you? Just visualize. What do you feel? When you will realize someone is praying for you, what would you feel? Especially if you are already, you already hit the rock bottom of your life. You are already on your darkest moment of your life. Imagine yourself, you didn't get your salary yet. And you need to pay something, then someone will approach you and, Brother, I pray for you. Imagine you will have this one simple ignition of hope. Amen? Amen. You will be fueled. You will be propelled. Same is true with the missionaries. Brothers and sisters, they will go to a strange land. They don't know anyone from there. I want to challenge you before you leave this place, try to read your, your, your book. Your booklet. I just mentioned something there. What is a missionary? What is a missionary? These missionaries, these are someone who leaves their families for a short time so that others may be with their families for eternity. These are sacrifice, brothers and sisters. That's why they need your prayers. You might not be a, a good preacher like Pastor John. You might not be a good, uh, same like Apostle Paul. But you can do something for these missionaries. You can either give your tithes, but you can do it unknowingly, and no one can would know it, that you can pray for these missionaries. Amen? Amen. Can you do that this morning? Amen. That is very important. I remember there is one saying that I wrote read here, Jonathan Goforth. He was a great Canadian missionary to China. He said, all, mo all movements of the Spirit in China, with our experience, may be traced to prayer. Amen. You cannot do anything without prayer. Right. You cannot do anything without prayer. Anything of God that any of us can, can be seen and can be tracked and can be traced back to prayer. Before you have received something that you badly need in your life, 
I will talk to you. Before you get that, you have prayed a lot and a lot of times you did that in your life. Amen? Not just for a church, but for a missionary. Amen? Amen. The Apostle Paul need a partner to pray for him. Now we have already understand the importance of a prayer partners. Now we go back to our second sub-point, the involvement of prayer partners. But I, I, now I know that how, why I do have, why do I need to pray? But how would I pray, Brother Ian? How do you do that? Yes, I have anticipated that you will be asking me that question right now. Because yes, I was begging for the Lord to give me something that I can share to you this morning. So that whenever you go home, you can bring some few words. I remember, Pastor John, when you prepare a message, you have to bring something that someone will remain and retain in their minds whenever they, you go home. I want to share with you that Apostle Paul himself, he mentioned this one, that we should be doing this, praying, and we need someone that is willing to get involved. Amen? Amen? Brethren, pray for us. He is pleading for the brethren during that time to pray for them. The missionaries are pleading, please, we need your support, but we need your prayers as well. You you hear the message of uh, Brother Pastor Shelieto just a while ago, the presentation. He said, I thank you for your generous support and I thank you for your prayers. They need your prayers, brothers and sisters. They need your prayers. Even the powerful man, Apostle Paul, he needs and he asks and he begs for the prayer of the church, the early churches during that time. Brothers and sisters, prayer or supplication is, is the meaning of supplication is praying about the needs that we have in our life. That we, the mean the needs. I want to emphasize the needs, brothers and sisters. Not the words. The needs. God will supply all my needs according to His riches and His glory. But God didn't mention that He will give you a Ferrari if you will follow the Lord. God will give you a small car, a normal car, but I'm sure if you will pray so hard in the steering wheel, you can reach your destination, you can reach industrial area. Amen? Amen. If you will, Lord, we can be tirik sa akin sa salta, ang init-init. Amen? God gave us something that will bring you closer to God. Amen? Because He knows that you will have the complete dependence on our Lord Jesus Christ. I will I will tell you, how can you pray for your missionary? I made an acronym on this one. I made an acronym about how can you pray for your missionary. You can only say it in five letters. It is bless. You can bless the missionaries. The letter B for letter for bless, that is pray for the physical health of the missionaries. Pray for the physical health of the missionaries. The missionaries went to Africa, they went to other places, they are coming from Philippines, they came from a tropical country and you will go to Africa, you will go to China, there is snow there, there is desert there. What happens to you? Your body will adjust to the hot climate or the cold climate, meaning to say you are prone to illnesses. That's why we need to pray for them. Pray for them so that they will have good physical health so that they can continue the work of God. Amen? I made this simpler for you so that you won't forget this one. It's easy for us to say God bless you, brother, but doing it in action is more better. Amen? Bless. B is for body, pray for the physical health of the missionary. Pray for their safety. They are always traveling by land, by air, by water. Pray for them. Pray for their physical needs, especially their financial needs to be met. You, you will compute how much we are giving to the missionaries. It's a very small amount of what they, are, they need to gather and to accumulate for the whole month in order for them to live their lives. Amen? Amen. That's why they are so much, they, they pray so much that we need to help them in praying. Amen? B is for body. Pray for the physical health of our missionaries. L is for labor. Pray for the work of the missionary. Brothers and sisters, 
pray for open doors. Some missionary, they went to China. It's not allowed to preach the word of God there. Maybe they will get to, to they will be uh, harassed or they will go to jail. Pray for open doors. Pray for boldness and courage and empowerment of the Holy Spirit so that the missionaries can do their job with all the courage and they know that someone is praying for them in, in Doha or in the Philippines. That's why they have the passion, they have the drive to preach the word of God. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Pray for decision making. Pray for them. L is for, B is for body, L is for labor, and E is for emotions. Brothers and sisters, missionaries are also human beings. They are the same like you and I. They get homesick. Anyone among you who are homesick? Brother Frederick? I see Brother Stephen. Huh? David. Oh, mostly of us are, they, we got homesick. Amen? Yeah. Same is true with missionaries. They went to a foreign land, they went to a foreign country, they got homesick. Pray for them so that they may overcome, they may have the encouragement, they can overcome the depression, the sadness that they have, and the loneliness. Pray for them, brothers and sisters. S is for social. These missionaries are, like what I said, they are human beings. They have social relationships. They have families. They have wives. They have kids. They have marriages. Pray for them. Maybe the moment that they are so much attached to the ministry, they forget about their wives. They forget about their kids. Pray for them. Pray for them that everything will be okay. And S is for Spiritual, this is very crucial and very important. When someone gets depressed or someone gets, gets sad, the normal tendency of Satan is to attack us in our spiritual life. We stop reading the Bible, amen? Be honest, brothers and sisters, when you get sad, when you pray, when you don't get what you want, do you still read the Bible? Do you still pray? Same is true with our missionaries. They are human beings. Let us include them in your prayers. Let us not tell them, we prayed for you. But let us be specific as we pray for them. Let us pray that they may, have the, they may be full with the Holy Spirit. Let us pray that they may have a deeper prayer life. And let us pray that they may overcome the temptations of our enemy, Satan. Amen? Amen. Let us pray and let us bless the missionary. B is for body, L is for labor. E is for emotion, S is for social, and S is for spiritual. Please don't forget about this, brothers and sisters. When you leave tonight, when you leave this place this morning, please bless your missionary. Pray for them. And second point, the petition for shares. Apostle Paul was mentioning here that finally, my brethren, finally, my brethren. He said, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have recourse. May have recourse. Apostle Paul was telling here that, that the word of the Lord may have recourse. He's very specific here. He wanted directly to mention what is exactly what he wants to pray. He wants the word of the Lord may have recourse. Just for your illustration, what is the meaning of recourse, Brother Ian? Recourse is that if I would illustrate, did, have you seen a water? Have you seen a river, a river of free flowing water? Whenever you put some barrier on it, the water will find another way because that is the characteristic of liquid. That they will find another way or copy another one, especially with its level, in order for them to have the free course. Same is true with the gospel. Let us include our prayers that the gospel may be or have may have free course. Meaning to say, the meaning of pre-course is that in Greek it is stretcho, meaning that is to run, to flow, to go. That is the meaning of it. Brothers and sisters, the petition of Apostle Paul, the word of the Lord, this means that he is mentioning here specifically that the word of the Lord may have pre-course. He is praying that you pray for Apostle Paul that the word of the Lord may have recourse. Meaning to say that the word of the Lord may be spread and may be shared 
to all the individuals in that place. That is the meaning of precourse. If someone will help hinder you, same is true with here. We are in a country that is we are not allowed to go there and preach the word of God on the streets. But we are very blessed because God gave us a free course. This was only made possible because of the prayer before we came here. Someone already prayed for us that may the work of the Lord in Qatar will have its free course. Amen? That's why we have the privilege of gathering here without the police catching us. Amen? Yes. Someone prayed for us. That's why this is being manifested. Right Amen. Now. Amen. The message of the missionary brothers and sisters is not a political message. This is not a social message. This is not a personal message. Like Pastor John used to say, we are preaching here in BBC, not our opinions, not our beliefs. Amen. But we are preaching here the Word of God. Amen. This is what we preach. Regardless of you will be hit on your seat right now. We don't care. We don't care. As long as the Word of God is being preached, Amen. that is what is important for each and every one of us here in Miriam Baptist Church. Amen. The Word of God is very important. This is not a social message. Or a personal message, this is a word of God. If you will open your Bibles in Hebrew 4, verse 12, what is the message? What is the word of God? Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow. And this is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. The word of God is powerful. This came from the Lord. That's why we don't preach here our opinions. We preach here the Word of God. Amen. 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 So, the first point we shared is that the... What is the first point that we have shared? <coughs> the petition... No, no, this is the second one. The partner, Paul 6. Part, Apostle Paul is asking for part prayer partners. Second, the, the Apostle Paul was asking what is the what he wants to share. The petition Paul shares. That is the petition of Apostle Paul. For the word of the Lord be shared to each and every one on a free course. And the, the second sub point for the, number two, the race he was running. Like what I said a while ago, Apostle Paul compared himself in a runner. In a runner. A runner, we are now watching the Rio games, especially the Olympics nowadays. Apostle Paul compares himself in a runner. But he is running, he is the running the race to preach the gospel to as many souls as he could. Getting people saved was not a part of his life. This is his life. Sharing the word of God is not a part-time job. This is a full-time job. Yes. And this is his job. Only job. Amen? Apostle Paul takes this one as seriously. The question here is that, how about you, brother? What race are you running into right now? Are you in a race? Are you in a race to save someone? Brothers and sisters, if you will look beside you, who is sitting beside you right now? And if the one sitting beside you is not your family, brothers and sisters, I want you to, I want to challenge you this morning. Before I continue, I want to share with you, I was working uh, on, on, on my office. I had a, an M, an office made M. I had a Buddhist, and I have another, I think, uh, another Sri Lankan guy. They said that in order for you to go to paradise, you have to go to right, the right way, and the left way. And they were talking, so I just cut them short, and then I just told them, brothers and sisters, my colleagues, it, for me, how about you, brother? Yeah, he asked me. For me, there's only one way. It's not the right way, or it's not. It's the. It's not the left way. There's only one way. It is John 14:6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That is according to our Lord Jesus Christ. There's no other way. You can go on the right way. You can go on the left way. There's only one way. Brothers and sisters, how about your loved ones? Are they saved? Before I ask you that, how about you this morning? Are you saved? 
If you were not saved, someone will approach you this morning and share to you the Word of God. Someone, I'm sure. Someone will share to you the Word of God this morning. As Apostle Paul was running the race, a runner, in order for him to win a race, he should run and he should start the race. Amen? Amen. You cannot run a race if you don't start to run. Apostle Paul had a desire to share the Word of God. So he started running. And being a runner, you don't run and you stop. You have to continue the pace. As a runner, you have to run continuously. You have to run in a pace. You see a runner that is running, then suddenly after 10, 5, five minutes, 1 minute, he will stop and he will drink water and he will open his Facebook. You won't see any runner do that. Does that. You will see a runner that will run for hours. Because he need to maintain a pace. Same is true with the missionaries. The missionary need to start the race. He need to go to a place and start a mission there. Then, whenever he gets depressed, whenever he gets sad, he will stop. No, he don't do that. He will not do that. He will continue to preach the word of God regardless of what heartaches, of what difficulties that he will face in his life. Amen? Amen. And 2 Timothy 4.2 2 Timothy 4, I will just I want to share with you this verse. Preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. With long suffering. Sabi mahabang pasensya po. Regardless kung pwede ka mag-preach o hindi. Mainit o malamig. You have to preach. Amen? Amen. You have to share the word of God. And lastly, Lastly, everyone smile. The purpose Paul states. I will be very quick on this. I will be very quick. The purpose Paul states. This is the last part. Whenever Apostle Paul requests for prayers, not for his personal life, not for his own, but he wants to share, he asks the brethren or the early churches to pray for him. He asked them that to pray that the word of the Lord may have recourse. Na magtuloy-tuloy po ang salita ng Panginoon na lumagana sa buong mundo. Yung po ang dahilan ng pag-request ng ating Apostle Paul na magipag-pray siya. For them to the word of God to have this true course. Why does he have to do this? Because he seeks that the answer to their prayers for them is that the Lord would be glorified. To bring glory to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? The missionaries, they will go to other places, far places, difficult places. Their only goal is to plant the flag of the Lord Jesus Christ in these lands and for other people to be shared. To share the word of God. Their work as a missionary is to bring glory to God and His kingdom. Amen? The first sub point for this is the result of sharing the word is that the main objective why we are sharing the word of God is for people to see God saved. Amen? Amen. To see God saved. That's why we are sharing the word of God. That's why we are giving our tithes. That's why we are praying for the missionaries. For us to see people got saved. I'll give you an illustration, a very simple example. Let's talk about Apostle Paul. We are talking about him. Apostle Paul his name before was Saul. Apostle Paul, Saul before, was a persecutioner. He was an executioner. When he learned about the Lord Jesus Christ, when he was converted, from Saul, he became Paul. From persecutor, he became persecuted. From pastor, Lagi po siya namimeste ng mga Christians. Takot po lahat sa kanyang mga Christiano. He become a preacher. We can see the changes in the Apostle Paul lives. Even though if Barnabas already bring him to the group of the, the believers, they got scared. Because is it this guy the one that kills the believers? And now he is joining us. Is it scary? Of course it's scary. But brothers and sisters, only the Lord Jesus Christ can change a man. Amen. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can change a criminal into a believer. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can save a sinner 
to a saint. The question here this morning is that, how about you? Do you have any change in your life? Don't tell it to your seatmate as well. But you can come to the Lord Jesus Christ this morning and pray to Him. Brothers and sisters, if you don't know Him, if you don't love the Lord, if you don't have a relationship with Him, the Lord Jesus Christ loves you so much. Amen. That He even sent His only begotten Son to die for us in the cross of Calvary to pay for our sins. And on the third day, He rose again. That is the victory that we have in our sin. In sin. And the, the result of sharing the Word of God is people got saved. And the reward of sharing the Word is that to bring glory in our Lord. That is the only glory that we can have. Souls that are saved are not the ultimate reward for a missionary. That is a blessed reward, I believe. If you see people saved, is it you will rejoice? Amen? Right? Amen. But sharing the Word of God and seeing people get saved, the most important part of all is to bring glory on our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to remember 1 Corinthians 1.31 that whatever you do, whether, whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatsoever you do, do all for the glory of God. And 1 Corinthians 6.20 For ye are bought with a price. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you. He was scorched. He was, he was spit on. He was shamed. He carried all the burdens of sins in order for us to get saved. And He died on the cross of Calvary to pay for our sins. And then on the third day, He rose again. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. Glorify God. And in your spirit, which are God's. Hindi po sa atin itong katawan natin. Hindi po sa atin itong spirito natin kundi galing po ito sa ating Panginoong Heso Christo. Amen? Amen. Amen. I will be closing right now. And I will, before I close, I will tell you one story. Very close. It is very critical for a missionary the prayer that a believer can give to him. Amen? It's very critical. But I will tell you one story. This is a very quick story. This will just last for one minute and 15 minutes. The story I want to share with you was a true story. There was a pastor guy, specialized Pastor John. He had a son, an 11-year-old son. And every service on during Fridays or Sundays, because this happens in another country, he will, after the service, the church service, they will go out to give gospel trucks. They do this for how many years already? Then one night, after the service, it was a very rainy and chilling evening. The child, he went on his very nice jacket and he put in his very warm jacket and raincoat so that he prepares himself. Then he talked to his dad, Daddy, I'm ready. He said, the father, the pastor dad said, Oh, I'm not going out in this weather like this. And the son said, Daddy, is it there are a lot of souls out there that can be saved with our gospel truck? Okay, okay, just go ahead. Just be careful. Meaning to say the father allowed the son to go out in a rainy and chilly evening. That was around 7 o'clock in the evening. The little, this 11-year-old boy went out and he bring uh, what, a bunch of uh, gospel trucks with him. And he was giving on the streets. Because it was rainy day. It was rainy evening. Most of the, the people are already inside their houses and they left already. Then, this 11-year-old boy, he had a one glass gospel truck on his hand. So what he did, he don't want to throw it. If I will be that guy, I will, if I will be that boy, I will just hide it somewhere else. Right? But this boy was so passionate about giving, sharing the gospel trucks. He, he don't see any people in the streets anymore. So he saw one old house. He just knocked it there. He knocked it there and then he knocked. And he, he knocked for five minutes, I guess. Then when no one is opening, he just knocked again. Then suddenly, the door opened. He saw an old lady, 
a very old lady. And he said, what can I do for you, son? And he, the little boy said, I'm sorry, ma'am, for disturbing you, but I just wanted to give you my one last gospel truck. I just want to tell you about our Lord Jesus Christ. And I just want to tell you that Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ loves you so much. And he handed out the truck, and then he left. This little boy ran away, and he go back to his house. And the next Sunday, the pastor, the father pastor, was preaching on the church. Then he asked, can we have, a, does anyone want to share their blessings or their testimony? There's one small and old little lady sitting on the last podium on the chair on the church. He stood up and he raised his hand and he said, maybe most of you doesn't know me. But I just want to let you know that last Sunday, I'm already going up on my on my on the ceiling of my house, uh, on, on, the, on my second on the second floor of my house. Before I went there, I just want to let you know that all my kids left me. My husband already died two months ago. I'm in a debt right now, and the house should be removed or be taken by the bank. And he was, and this lady, she was almost, she almost rock bottom, rock bottom of his life, and she wanted to end her life. So what she did, she get a rope, hung it in her ceiling, and then put the rope in his neck. And then, when he's, he bring a chair, and when he's about to jump the chair, he hear the knock from a, an 11-year-old boy. That 11-year-old boy didn't stop knocking for five minutes. That lady during the time when he was testifying, she said, maybe that little boy will, only, will just walk away. She will walk away. After no one will open the door, she will walk away. But that little boy persistently knocked the door. So she was disturbed. So she removed the rope from his neck. She went down and she opened the door. And when she opened the door, she, he, she saw a smile from a little boy. And you know what the, what the word that came from the little boy's mouth? She said that I want to talk to you about the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ loves you so much. Amen. Amen. That, little, that old lady got saved. She accepted the Lord Jesus Christ. She read the truck. She accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and prayed the sinner's prayer. Then she went to church. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Right now, as I leave the stage, you don't know that the missionaries are like the little boy. Even in the cold and chilly evening time, even if no one will allow them to go out, they will go out because of the passion and because of the love that they have for the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you don't know that people are dying. People are going to hell. The only thing that you can do is to pray for your missionary. Thank you. Amen. Would you go ahead, please?